It is. Guys had good zip. It's going to get long, though, this week. But after a couple of days, they're, they're a group that likes to work, so I think they're happy to get back out there together. Well, we have a plan how we're going to go through the week, you know, balancing practice with days off. Uh, we are going to meet with the veteran guys that have been through it, you know, see how that jives. We've talked about scrimmaging. Will we do it at night, prepare like a game, bring them in in the morning. Um, we'll talk to some people outside the organization. I don't want to get too specific with that because then they get brought into it, see how they've handled it, at least the mental side of things. I mean, our practices, I don't know if they're rel completely relevant to how a baseball or football team would practice, obviously, but some of the mental sh side of that part, or basketball for that matter, um, and then gather information and go from there. Be ready to go. I think it's inevitable you're going to have some rust, but we're, the rest is the positive part of it. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get after it quick when we do get after it. And who knows, uh, San Jose and St. Louis, if it ends Tuesday, they, you know, they're sitting around for six days too. And is there a big difference between six and ten? I mean, at the end of the day, I think both teams are going to be rusty if it goes six. If it goes seven, then they might have that competitive edge uh, in the first game, but we'll do our best to overcome that. Yeah, I don't have a great answer to that. I mean, clearly, we'd like to run them right back out there, the whole group, to be honest with you. But um, said we'll talk to him too as well. He knows what's in front of him. He's been around. He's a good pro. He'll have to kind of figure out for himself how to get dialed in each day, and so that you know, come next Monday, he's at where he feels is 100% dialed in. Which, like I said, I don't even know if he'll have an easy answer for that either, because it's just. It is what it is. You're off, so you're going to lose a bit of sharpness. Have you had those conversations with those external Not yet, no. We've reached out to a few people, and you know, when we do, then I don't know. That, you know, some of that is obviously private information. They may not want out in the public, but for me, it may be good stuff and maybe relevant, maybe not. You know, they may be willing to share, maybe not as well. So some people are more open to it than others, and we'll we'll find out. But I think at the end of the day. My biggest, um, I think, resource will be the players that have been through it. You know, wh how do they see it going forward? You know, what what's their plan? What's their experiences? And go from there. It is in terms of our preparation. We're kind of looking at two teams, um, and we've already started cutting some of it up. So fifty percent is going to be wasted. So we're going to be really good next year against either St. Louis or San Jose the first time we play them. Um, but that's just what it is. We have free time, so we're used to doing pre-scouts. So for me, it's just business as usual. You're just looking at two different teams. So. Well, there was the core, right, from, from day one, but some of that core was not in China. So a little bit of that was the younger guys taking charge. Past, even Jake, you know, had been a year, year, was a little more vocal, and Charlie. Um, I think the Winter Classic was a, probably one of those, you know, want to look back, a turning point. I think that whole Peaky Blinders theme was really brought the guys together. I, I think that was Krug's doing, if I'm not mistaken. They could answer that. but. And then the game itself, we seem to take off from there. So that was definitely one area where, you know, the group really came together. Um, I think that was the first time, if I'm not mistaken, we were probably healthy, maybe all year with our the, the, the group we thought we'd start with or the team we, we, we were going to ice on opening night or you know, whatever the first couple of weeks. When, when the room was passed, I think, you know, the players would have to, I think we've allowed the players to have that room for a long time. I mean, it's Z and Berge, right? And then Kretsch and two. These guys have been around. They've won a cup. So I don't think we've really ever interfered with, with that part of it. I think we've tried to use that as a positive that they you know, can police a lot of those things. We'll take care of the game planning, the practice prep, and all that. And, but the leadership part, I think, has done a good job with that. So I don't know if there's a specific time this year. Now, with this particular team, I don't know, Matt, to be honest. I, like I said, I think we've passed it on. 
you know, was when I first got here, for the most part, they got to know me, what my expectations were. I got to know them a little better, what clearly what they're how they're capable of leading, and and then it just kind of evolved from there. I notice it in here. You're always sitting beside Mike. I notice that. And then there's people on this side, right? It's, it's just the way it works. Um, of course, there's cliques. You've got guys that are married that are probably more likely to spend some time. Their kids are the same age, young guys. But I do see this in the row. I, we were in Columbus, and I saw you know, guys walking to dinner, Bacchus, Bergeron, Carlo. Like, you Bacchus, Bergeron makes sense, that, you know, but Brandon in there is a young guy. So... There's clicks, but I don't think I think you can airdrop any two or three guys in our team together at one place and they'll get along fine. It's just the way they are. I think it's a reason we've had success too. Guys want to play for one another. Usually, if you want to play for one another, you generally like one another. I feel terrible for him, to be honest with you. Uh, he's had a tough year. And you, you know that, right? I mean, the one on the throat that we thought was fine, and he's out five weeks. Another one he blocks, I think it was in Edmonton. Comes back, and many want to get him a couple games. How do we balance that? Gets hurt, you know. So uh, it, it is part of the, I hate to use that expression, it's part of the business, but it is guys getting hurt. But I feel, like I said, I feel real bad. He doesn't get an opportunity to be on the inside of this. You know, he's always a, he's a great teammate. He's here. And he, but I'm sure if you ask him, he feels like he's a bit of, when you're not playing, you feel like you're on the, on the outside a little. But he's been a real good player for us up, you know, for years. And, but that's it, you know, that's where it gets left, right, unfortunately for him. It's, you know, hopefully we'll have an, another opportunity down the road to have another run, and he's part of it. I saw him this morning. He was in good spirits. Um, what did Donnie say? <laughs> uh, clearly, he's you know he's going to be out for a while. I don't know if he's going to be available to us. Uh, you know, as we get closer, I tend to pay more attention to that. He's certainly not going to practice you know tomorrow or the next day, and hopefully we'll have a better update for you as we go. But he's in good spirits. Obviously, you know it sucks for him too. But you know he 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 played and and probably feels like and he should that he's been a you know a contributor to this run because he's been in the games a little different than Kevin who unfortunately never got to suit up in the playoffs so um, and that's probably it with Wags right now uh, maintenance day for him he should be back tomorrow Z and Camphor skated before practice so we'll see if they'll get integrated tomorrow uh, we've kind of set it up I don't believe we're going to skate Tuesday so if Z doesn't then we'll look at Wednesday but we, with him we don't want to push it I know he's, he's, he's a workhorse. I'm going to want to get in there as, back with the group as quickly as possible. So, But that's the update on those are the only other two guys, correct? Uh, so I suspect they'll all be with us by, by Wednesday at the latest. <laughs> Mark, no, he got a, I don't want to get too specific. I think he had a little setback in the practice the next time we're on the ice. Um, but I believe he'll be ready as well. It was a minor setback. Well, it will be. F he's a very popular guy in the team. So, f I mean, the guys that won want to win again, obviously. But there's a little extra pull, for sure, for a guy like David. He's been a captain in this league. He came to the Bruins with the feeling of, you know, they they'll have an opportunity to win a cup, and here we are. So, I, I do believe. How much? I don't know. But I do believe the guys will be really, especially the older guys. I think the younger guys are kind of, it's inevitable. They're probably like, well, we'll be here next year or the year after a lot of times. I just think that's the way you think when you're young. Um, but as you get older, you know that it's, you know, they, they don't come around every year. So I think the older guys will have a little more zip, you know, for, for David as well. <laughs>